Hello there everyone. Right now in Cobalt, it's 4.22pm on Thursday, January 28th, 2021. Hmm, there really isn't any news to speak of today, but... Oh, the latest copy of my favorite magazine arrived today. I'm looking forward to reading it later. Uh, oh dear. I guess that doesn't really qualify as news, does it? That's all for now. I hope you all enjoy the loveliest of lovely days. And welcome back to more Animal Crossing New Horizons! So last time, uh, we celebrated the new year. Uh, so this time, uh, there was just an update that dropped. Uh, thank you for downloading the update. We'd like to give you a present to show our appreciation. Please remember to keep an eye out for future updates as well. Um, so we have a special present this time. And this is... Maracas. So this update uh, adds in a few things, um, so, so let's check the Nook Shopping app. Uh, if we go to the Seasonal section, there's a Bean Tossing Kit, um, so let's buy that. There's the Rossetti model, um, a Megaphone, and uh, a football rug. So all of these are new seasonal items available. Uh, these two are available until early February, and these are available until mid-February. Um, obviously these are Super Bowl, and these are basically Groundhog Day. Uh, Setsubun is kind of also a, a welcoming of spring event, uh, from what I recall, involving um, throwing beans at Oni um, to drive them out. Um, so, speaking of Oni, uh, from what I gather, this update actually adds quite a bit to the shops, um, including outfits. So, next up, I want to go to the Able Sisters shop, uh, to see what they have in stock. Hey there, welcome to Able Sisters, where we sell fashions made lovingly by Claw. So, I'm not sure if it'll be available yet, um, so I'm just gonna make sure that this is or isn't available yet. Uh, but, uh, from what I gather, they have added some kind of, like, um, Oni-themed gear for, um, Setsubun. Uh, I don't know when it starts appearing, though, if we have to wait until February, or if it'll appear sooner than that. Um, but that's cool. I really like this, to be honest. Um, because Setsubun was previously a Japanese-only holiday. Um, so yeah, it's kind of cool getting to finally experience it in some form in this game. Also, um, this is technically Rossetti's first appearance, even though he's technically not in the game yet. Uh, obviously the figure is a reference to uh, Groundhog Day, where Rossetti would always take the place of the Groundhog. It's kind of a shame that Rossetti himself won't, uh, be involved in a Groundhog Day event. Um, I really wish they added in more holidays, um, like that, more minor holidays, maybe in the future. Like right now it makes sense that they're kind of focused on, um, festival. Uh, but in the future I'd like for them to also add in some of the supplementary holidays as well. Like, I'm not entirely sure if, if we're getting, uh, Shamrock Day back, uh, as an example, or, uh, St. Patrick's Day. Um, or if that'll just be, like, special items. It feels like this game is built more around items, um, than events, which is a direction and that I'm not entirely sure if I like or not, not to be perfectly honest. Hello. Welcome to Nook's Cranny. Um... So, in here, this still seems very much geared towards the, um, 
what am I trying to say? The winter stuff still, like I'm not seeing anything different. Um, from what I gather, things will start to show up eventually. Um, that will probably be festival themed, so I'll keep an eye out for that. Maybe check back in uh, February. Really quickly double checking some of the uh, known info about the game. It does seem like the Oni costume uh, starts appearing in the stores in February, um, along with other stuff as well. Um, closer to the middle of the month, uh, there also should be even more um, Nook shopping items uh, tied to Valentine's Day. Um, so we'll check back a few times next month, a lot more than January with its zero events because even New Year's Day didn't have anything this year. Um, that's another one. I feel like, uh, there should be a New Year's Day event added, uh, eventually as well instead of just New Year's Eve. Um, so yeah, that was actually kind of disappointing, um, not having anything particularly special going on there. Um, also, towards the middle of the month, um, there should also be several uh, New Year's related items for the Chinese New Year. So we'll also try to come back to town around then um, to try to collect everything. Um, beyond that, this update didn't really add anything new or exciting, sadly, uh, except Festival, which is um, supposed to take place uh, I think middle of February? I'm actually not sure on that. Um, obviously details are a little bit scarce on how that works because no one can experience it because a lot of events are actually time locked. Um, so you can't time travel to them, uh, but once you pass that date, uh, you can actually time travel back to them. Um, so yeah, we don't really know a whole lot about this yet, so uh, it's kind of a wait and see at the moment. If there was actually festival themed furniture, I might replace the Christmas decor here um, with festival themed furniture. Um, again, this might be kind of like a little seasonal area that'll rotate out uh, depending on the season. Um, we're still in January, so I feel like it's still fine to leave that up for a little bit. Um, beyond that, I have been working on. Um, the museum very slowly. We're, we're still waiting for the final diving creatures and uh, quite a lot of artwork. Um, so one thing um, I actually actually wanted to talk a little bit about is actually Setsubun. Um, I talked about it a little bit, but um, I actually have a lot of memories tied to Setsubun uh, in Animal Crossing despite never experiencing it. And the reason is um, New Leaf released a long time... Uh, New Leaf was out for a long time in Japan before it released in uh, North America and Europe. So I followed um, a couple of YouTubers um, who played through the Japanese version of the game. Um, and I remember seeing Setsubun and kind of learning about it there. Um, so I kind of always think about that when I hear about Setsubun is I think about uh, watching this particular YouTube channel that I don't think even uploads anymore. I think I, I, think I checked a while ago and uh, they stopped doing videos sadly. Um, but yeah, um, it's one of those weird things of like I have very uh, positive memories of this holiday <laughs> vicariously through watching YouTube videos. Um, and then, of course, the holiday wasn't even in the North American version because um, being a Japanese holiday and kind of being an analogous to um, Groundhog Day, there's just a Groundhog Day event instead. Um, I miss the old one in the GameCube game where Rossetti actively shows up to be the Groundhog. I don't think they really do that in New Leaf even, uh, which is kind of a shame. Um, I feel like in general the holidays have gotten a lot simpler in this game and the later games in general. Like, I feel like the GameCube game had the most elaborate holidays, like actively trying to find Franklin, um, stealing utensils and giving them to Franklin 
so they can't, uh, eat him. And things like that. In general, the holidays back then were a lot more complex. And obviously a lot of it has to do with there not being any updates without releasing a separate game. Which, in all fairness, they did a few times. Um, Animal Crossing, or Animal Forest, to Animal Forest Plus, to Animal Crossing, to Animal Crossing E+. Plus. Um, so yeah, they did essentially patch the game by just re-releasing it constantly um, across multiple platforms even. Um, so yeah, back then they basically had to pack a lot of content into a game because what you see is what you get. Uh, no updates without, again, making a whole separate version. Um, so yeah, I feel like games nowadays uh, tend to have less content at launch because they're trying to stretch it out more. And I feel like Animal Crossing New Horizons is a great example of that, where it feels like because stuff has been data mined, um, it kind of feels like they're they're holding things for later. Like, um, there was stuff that was data mined near launch that still hasn't made it in, like the uh, ability to grow vegetables. Um, was basically data mined extremely early on and was only added for Halloween. Um, likewise, other things have been data mined like uh, an extra store expansion, um, Brewster, or at least a cafe, um, and other really interesting features that were honestly in previous games um, and are still missing. So I have a few theories on this. The obvious theory is based on the fact that we are currently living through a pandemic. Um, they're having a harder time getting that content into the game as soon as they thought they would. Um, like, maybe the holidays, because they're time sensitive, take priority. Um, so a lot of the other things, including like, sadly, quality of life updates, and other like, returning characters and installations, have to be put on hold while just trying to get all the holidays into the game. Um, so I hope, once we're past this, because the next holiday, not, or the next event, is being teased as a Mario collaboration. Um, and it's March, which is the one year anniversary of the game. I am kind of hoping that next month, or not next month, but uh, March's update is like a really big year anniversary um, update that in addition to adding in like Mario crossover items also adds in like, you know, some of the content they've been sitting on for a while. Um, obviously this is all conjecture at this point, um, who knows. Um, maybe they were, there was stuff there at launch that they planned to put in and then just uh, scrapped plans for other reasons. Um, but I just have this feeling that if, it, if the world was in a better spot, um, they would end up trying to... Uh, they would have put out more of this content faster. And also I feel like because this game is literally one of the best-selling games of 2020 because of the pandemic, um, I feel like this slow rollout doesn't make sense from the standpoint of um, the game's level of success. Because the game is so huge, you'd think they would add more content in faster, which makes me think there's some holdup for this content. Um, I feel like I talk about this almost every time I do an Animal Crossing video because they're recorded so far, uh, far apart. And I kind of forget what I've actually talked about already, and I feel like I come back to this topic uh, quite a bit. Um, because that is one of the big problems with this game, and again, live service games, or games as a service in general, um, is the feeling of gradually rolling out content to the point where sometimes it feels like they're withholding content uh, just to give them something to add later. Um, and then they're not being enough at launch and things like that. Um, again, I still like Animal Crossing New Horizons. I just uh, see a lot of potential in it that hasn't exactly been uh, met yet. Um, like, there's a lot of potential for this game to surpass 
a lot of the older games, but at the moment, um, it's it's kind of not there yet. But it has potential. Splatoon 2 was is an example I go go to a lot, where Splatoon 2 at launch was kind of like this is kind of iffy. It's like why move over because Splatoon 1 is finished and has so much more content. But by the end, I feel like it was safe to say that Splatoon 2 was generally better once all the content finally landed, even though it took a while in that case. Um, so yeah, there's still potential. I don't think it'll surpass New Leaf. Sadly, I think we've passed the point where fundamentally I think New Leaf is structurally better set up in a, in a lot of ways. Um, so I think this could still be like top 3 Animal Crossing. Right now it's like um, kind of mid-level for me. I still play it every day a little bit, um, but again, I feel like it is partly that a lot of the common complaints about just uh, the game losing its like actual engaging quality and becoming more of a just play it for like 10 to 15 minutes a day. Um, I feel like that happens with every Animal Crossing game eventually. It just happened a lot faster because one, this game had less content to begin with, and two, people had a lot more time in their hands and managed to experience everything the game had to offer very fast. And Nintendo and the development team, it feels like they weren't quite able to match the speed at which players were experiencing everything, which is the problem with a live service. Um, I'm not even sure if this is technically considered a live service game, I think of it that way. Um, I haven't really played that many live service games, I guess, I think I've talked about this already, but the only one I think I've actually played is Star Wars Battlefront 2, which actually was also able to turn things around considerably. Um, so again, if a game like that can turn things around and actually become very, very popular recently, breaking 19 million downloads on Epic because it was free, um, and also reaching like very high concurrent uh, player totals, um, I kind of feel like at this game most life services can turn things around with enough enough effort. It's just a matter of, for Animal Crossing, will the interest still be there by the time um, this game manages to live up to its full potential. I feel, I feel like this is also why I haven't ever done a review of this game, because that's basically my thoughts on the game. It's like, it's getting there, but just more slowly than I would like. But also, it's completely understandable given the state of the world. Um, so yeah, it's a very complicated subject, I feel. Um, but yeah, I am still enjoying the game. I'm going to keep putting out videos whenever there's new content. So on that note, the next uh, check-in date will be uh, February 1st to see some of the new seasonal items. Um, but with that, we are ready to wrap things up for now. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Animal Crossing New Horizons.